Is that, fun? Is that a lot of fun? It's a lot of fun to be up here right now. Hey guys, we're called Tribe. The uh, stuff that we're doing, um, I know it sounds like we're banging on pots and pans, but this is actually, there's a lot of thought and a lot of heart that goes into this. And we just hope that you guys are blessed because of these rhythms. We got Davey over here. Tribe. And Mikey. My name, and my name is Mario. I'm the old guy. Stick drums here. Mario and Danny's, okay? Let's do it. Jonathan and Rennie, appreciate the food. That was fantastic. Delicious. I didn't get to eat any, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. And also, I screwed up big time earlier. Rich Ferrato's brother told me that the name is Morgan's Cove, not Pirate's Cove. So, excuse me. Morgan's Cove. You guys are at Morgan Co Morgan's Cove right now. So what we're going to do next is going to be super fun, at least for me. Maybe not so much for John. <laughs> and I got a couple things to say about that in regards to um, our festivities. Um, this party is um, essentially for John and at his expense. <laughs> it's not every day that you turn 70, right? Uh, 60. I'm sorry. Sorry, John. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do right now is I'm, I'm going to introduce a couple people that are going to come up and share, <laughs> quote, 
have some great stories and some um, some little anecdotes about John. But uh, just so you know, this is not necessarily an open mic time, unfortunately. And there's two reasons for that. First of all, John needs to get to bed by 9 o'clock. And the other reason is that John didn't think that all of you were that funny. So, but he did have a few people that he thought was funny. So we're going to bring those people up. And I think we're going to start out right now with, um, with Tony. Are you, are you ready yet, Tony? Tony's in the bathroom. <laughs> Tony's in the bar. Tony's on his way. All right. You guys want to hear old jokes while we're waiting? How about new ones? <laughs> All I have is old ones, Steve. Ten of the eight. All right. Good Steve, good Steve. Tony. How about a hand for Dave? Thank you, Dave. Real quick, um, my name is Tony, and I'm part of the tennis community that uh, John has joined, uh, I don't know, about five years ago. And um, he's quite the tennis player, and he has done a ton for Morgan Hill Tennis Club. He's spent thousands of dollars building some great structures, put in a pergola, which is good because I'm Italian, I like that word pergola. And it's all a community park, you got to come out and see it, there's benches, there's plaques. And I tell you, you know, that's one of the reasons why we let, you know, him play with us is because everything he does. <laughs> for us. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, John is president of the Morgan Hill Tennis Club, and he runs a, a tight ship. He's very strict at our meetings. Um, he uh, follows the professional business people. Robert's rules, I think some of you professional people. Robert's rules, he invokes those, but we didn't know it's actually Robert De Niro's rules. <laughs> uh, if we interrupt him, he, he says he's going to break our legs. Yeah, that's a little rough. Um, let me get my cocktail so I can make the first of many toasts to Johnny. 60 years. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Salud, Johnny. Salud. Man, you look good. You look like you just got laid. <laughs> Thank you very much, you guys. Thanks, Tony, very much. Okay, so keep the festivities alive here. Um, our next person gets to come up is um, John New. Uh, met this person from Leadership Morgan Hill, Tim Hennessy. Are you around, Tim? I don't even know where you're sitting. Over here. Oh, okay. Right, Tim. Tim's ready, man. Locked and loaded. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't say that about him. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... He was a cop. This, this, this is a roast. Yeah. This is a roast, right, people? Yeah. Well, John... Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're coming up here, buddy. We got, we got, we got business to handle. All right, Johnny! Ready? Ready? <laughs> Never want to be roasted by a cop. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, arrested. <laughs> All right, so first thing is, uh, John's been sending a lot of emails about what we can say and what we can't say. And uh, that's really not a roast, so I just added those to the spam filter, and buddy, you're screwed. <laughs> so uh, as most people know John, he's kind of sensitive on the harsh language. So I tried really hard, and it's very difficult, but I'm all right, no problem. So, but John, sometimes you've got to use harsher language. Um, especially like with modern technology. Um, it's okay that you pocket dialed me the other day. Or uh, butt dialed me as they say. But please stop telling my friends that you booty call. <laughs> That's a whole different thing. <laughs> also, uh, when you tell people you tweeted, that is not a bathroom emergency. <laughs> You know, John told me the other night, he says, I feel great. I feel the greatest I've ever had. And I was like, you're 60? What are you talking about? So, I, I don't know. I'm 38. And already I'm starting to notice when you sit down and stand up that you start to make a few of those noises, those pops, those cracks. You're not really sure what's going on. For some of us that would know John well, we all know he plays tennis. And I'm thinking, the people on the court next to him is probably going, who the hell's microwaving popcorn? <laughs> So because he plays tennis, I said, well, I got to get him something. So I go down to the local Big Five, and I'm telling the, the nice young lady there, I said, well, you know, my friend, he's a big avid tennis player, 
I got to get him something. I don't, I don't know. He's getting older. I'm worried about your health and your, your you know, your, I want to make sure you're safe when you're out there. So I said, well, maybe I get him something like a hat or something. And uh, I don't know, an elbow thing or something. That depends. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I, I told the nice young lady, I said, well, I want to get him something that'll, that'll help him play better tennis. And uh, at the same time, keep him, keep him safe. And uh, I said, well, maybe an athletic supporter? Maybe it's time. So I said, I need an athletic supporter for, uh, for a man who's uh, turning 60. And uh, she said, well, okay, we've got one for him. There you go. There you go, buddy. Man boo. So, so uh, I want to help you out with, uh, with some, there we go. He's uh, got his game face on. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. What about your knees? They're knee pads for the floor. <laughs> So I figured I, I got to get him something else. Sixties, big party. So uh, as we know, John likes to party. No. So uh, I said, well, you know, let me think back to when John was maybe younger, and uh, he was probably my age, in his thirties and the eighties. Is that right, John? And I said, well, what's the eighties? Neon and spandex, everything. What the hell explains that? I said, drugs and booze. I said, all right, maybe, nah, maybe, maybe he partied harder when he was like 21, 22. That was the seventies. So I said, well, what else explain disco and polyester? <laughs> Booze and drugs. <laughs> so to keep that going, John, I figured, well, you know, we could do some shots. So they come in a four pack now. <laughs> and uh, we, we could do some pills. Here we go. Yeah, you can tell, tell what, stool softeners. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I figured, you know, after such a busy day of uh, playing tennis and uh, feeling supported and uh, doing some shots and popping some pills with his friends, like most men, probably maybe wants to be lucky. And of course, at this age, that means not falling asleep during Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> or uh, not needing trained medical staff to help him in and out of bed. So I figured, well, what's a key essential part of, uh, of all that? Proper lubrication. No. So, I figured that uh, we could help him out with uh, with that, and uh, he can make now stash those around his house like alcoholics stash CBS vodka bottles in every drawer. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, figured to just help the guy out. Uh, so yeah, the other day he said again, you know, he said I feel the greatest I ever had, and I was like, that's that's crap. There's no way. I'm only 38, and I know I felt better when I was 18. So I, what kind of childhood did you have? Did you like grow up in an iron lung in like a nursery in a third world country? Like, what do you mean you feel great? And then I figured it out. John, you have Alzheimer's. So John, thank you very much. Happy birthday, buddy. Thanks, Tim. That's a hard act to follow. I'll share with you later. So it, it, it's going to get even funner than that because I'm going to bring up uh, some of John's kids right now to, to share with us. Um, John's, John's son and daughter-in-law, Jason, Jody Mockaby, would you guys come up front? I know you have some good ammo to uh, share with us. And while they're coming up, I just want to share, um, the other day I heard that uh, John's grandson, son, Jody Jason's son, Everett, Asked his grandpa, Papa, make a frog sound. And John asked, why? Everett said, because Grandma said, when you croak, we're all going to Hawaii. <laughs> Jason Jody Mockaby. Hi, thank you, Uncle Dave. Hey, listen, uh, we're most famous now for having five kids. It used to be because John Mockaby was my dad, but you know, we'll take it. So. Listen, uh, my dad's still in shock because if you didn't know, he's got 10 grandkids in the last seven years. So if you see him kind of with the dull eyed look. <laughs> well, anyways, so we have five kids in our house, and uh, uh, four of those are boys. So we've got a lot of.
competitive testosterone that goes around the house. John knows nothing about that, though. So anyways, just the other day, we heard the boys kind of arguing and having this little disagreement with some other boys at school, and they were, they were sort of trying to one-up each other over who had a better grandfather, sharing these different stories. And so after overhearing some of the interesting things that they were saying, we, we figured we, we would share with you that John Mockaby is not your normal grandparent. And we're going to teach you a little bit today about how to grandparent the John Mockaby way. So most grandparents read their kids' bedtime stories like Peter Pan or Goodnight Moon, Pops. No. He reads his grandkids the seven habits of a highly effective person. <laughs> slash motivational books, he should probably be a better person. <laughs> he probably should be wealthier, too. And since we're on the self-help topic, um, all of us at some point have received the, the love language book. I don't know if you've read that or not, but most people fit within a category in that book. And I'm not sure that there's a love language that describes throwing your own birthday party, <laughs> asking people to talk badly about you, <laughs> controlling how they talk badly about you, <laughs> and expecting to have a good time. So this guy, he's his own love language. And I hope you feel loved tonight, Pop. Well, most grandparents might celebrate turning 60 by buying a nice big RV or maybe going on a cruise. But, you know, Pop series, not most grandparents. He just goes for the pirate ship. <laughs> most grandparents take their grandkids to the park for a fun little play date, not Pops. He takes them to a leadership of Morgan Hill Mixer. <laughs> Come on, kids, isn't this great? <laughs> most grandparents keep their opinions to themselves when it comes to baby names. Oh, but not Pops. He's got lots of opinions. He told us we should name the boys Agassi, McEnroe, Federer, and Nadal. Most grandparents are readily available to babysit their grandchildren. Not Pops. He hears we want to go out for a night on the town. I'm right there with you. I'll pay for a babysitter. Most grandparents want to sit down, hear your hopes and dreams. Not Pops. He wants to tell you his hopes and dreams. But then he'll tell you your hopes and dreams. And then he's going to delegate to one of his seven hundred best friends to help you make it happen. Most grandparents, they enjoy playing board games on the floor with their grandchildren. Pops, he just gets bored. <laughs> Most grandparents might look forward to a wide open retirement schedule, leisurely sitting on the back porch on a rocking chair with a good book and maybe a cup of coffee. Oh, dear, uh, not Pops. <laughs> his schedule's so full between working, wakeboarding, tennis teams, networking events, hosting his own birthday party, being a <laughs> wannabe pirate sidekick. Oh, what? In fact, he takes the pirate sidekick thing pretty seriously. I, I was at a party here once, and we were invited. I was standing to the side, and I noticed he's in full pirate regalia. He's got a parrot on his shoulder. And he says to all the women as they come up, he gives them a hug and says, Hey, thanks for coming. Watch out for my pecker. <laughs> Thankfully, he's not wearing that tonight. He spared me from that. Ladies, you're in the clear. <laughs> Well, anyways. It's not that big anyways. That's what I hear. So. <laughs> that was not written on the paper. So what I was going to say is, we love you. <laughs> It's really fun to hear your kids talk about your grandpa in a little different way and certainly makes us realize that he's not the typical grandpa, but we like him just the way he is. Aww. Happy birthday, Dad. Love you, Grandpa. Love you, Grandpa.
Okay, so uh, what I'd like to do next is bring up uh, another set of uh, John's, John and Kelly's kids. Uh, Justin, <laughs> oh, one of <laughs> the son-in-law, Justin McEntee. Is this guy a stallion or what? Hey everybody, so I'm one of the son-in-laws, but uh, you guys probably know that there's two son-in-laws that John has, and I'm the other son-in-law, because uh, I'm a fundraiser, and the other son-in-law played pro baseball. So, who do you think John talks about the most? <laughs> yeah, not the fundraiser, I'll tell you. So, you know how much John loves talking about his kids, right? So, everywhere he goes, he's bragging about his kids. So, here I've been married to Joel 10 years, and I, I go to these parties, and I'll walk up to John's friends, and I'll say, hi, I'm John's son-in-law. And they look at me and go, oh, you're the baseball player. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not the baseball player. And they go, oh. And it's just awkward. They ask me a question, and they walk away. And this has happened to me nine or ten times over the years. So finally, we're at a party. I had a couple drinks. And uh, this family comes up to me, and they said, so you're the baseball player. And I said, as a matter of fact, I am. <laughs> and let me tell you. You know, I could have played another 10 years, but you know, it's just so tough being away from my wife, living on the road. And uh, I just had to walk away. So and I, so I, if you're here tonight, I'm sorry, whoever you are. I don't remember that conversation, but I'm not the baseball player. So, so anyways, uh, you know, John's getting old, and uh, we've been noticing a little dementia kicking in lately. And I think it started uh, about the time he started planning his own birthday party. The second one. I, I, the second time. But I think he's just a little confused, because you're not supposed to plan your own birthday party. So uh, that was the first thing that, that led us to believe that he uh, was having dementia. And uh, the second thing was, he, he's been getting real forgetful. I don't know about you guys, but I think I received 10 email reminders about coming to this party. You know? 20, 20 years ago, dementia couldn't affect a guy this way because you'd actually mail out the invitations. So you'd have to hand address 170 invitations. But with email, you can wake up tomorrow and go, did I send that email about the party? Oh, forward, send. The next day, I can't, did I send it? Forward, send. We all made it on time, John. We all made it on time. What did I say? And there's been several comments about, you know, um, this whole roasting situation. Your dementia manifested itself that way, too, because I think I got 25 of those emails. <laughs> you, you must have forgot how, how many and who we sent them to. And uh, so then there's the other, other thing that we've been noticing. In the, and, well, we've been noticing this for a long time, but it's really manifested itself in the last couple of years. John doesn't hear very well. What? what? A, has, anybody, has anybody ever been to his house and, and either... Try to try to talk to each other because the music's so loud you can hardly hear yourself think. So as a family, all the kids got together a couple years ago and we bought him these wireless headphones so that he could turn the TV up and the music as loud as he wants, but nobody else has to hear it. Well, I went to go look for him to wear him as a prop today, and there they were in the bottom drawer full of dust, never been used since the day we bought them. So that was a, that was a good idea that went bad. But uh, anyway, so the other thing is that, uh, you know, as you get old, uh, you tend to take a lot of naps. And uh, so I came up here, you know, on Thursday, hadn't seen John for a couple months, and uh, I'm really excited. We finally are alone. We're sitting on the couch, and... I'm starting to tell them all the stuff that's been happening in the last four or five months. And, and all of a sudden, I start to hear a noise. And I, I haven't looked at him in a couple of minutes. And there he is on the couch like this. <laughs> and I thought, my gosh, he's really getting old. This is terrible. I tell you, well, it's, uh, it's definitely been a lot of fun being part of your family, John. And uh, thank goodness you've deposited lots of coins in the love bank. So we're going to go ahead and take care of you even in your old age, so you don't have to worry about us, so thanks.
Thanks, Justin. Great. It's all true, too, by the way. So um, I get to bring up right now John's uh, oldest brother, uh, Gene, and his wife, Sonny. Um, I think uh, Sonny's staying behind, but but Gene's coming up. He's very dangerous. hear you in the back. Yeah, can you, can you folks in the back? Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. If not, you can move up. <laughs> Closer to the uh, line of attack. So, Gene Mockaby, how are you, sir? From New Hampshire. Came all the way. Hi, I'm Gene Mockaby. And uh, for 42 years I was a pastor, and so people usually expect me to start with a religious joke. Here I am. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> well, most of my uh, sermons were about 30 to 40 minutes long, so this was really difficult, John. I'm trying to cut it. Oh. Wrong <laughs> ones. In the beginning. Let's see, this is, I had to cut it down about 20 minutes. Well, I'm the uh, eldest of uh, four brothers, and I was 13 when uh, John was uh, born. So uh, I, I really could bore you to tears with stories of uh, how, uh, you know, we tormented Rich, and how John was perfect, <laughs> not... Yeah. <laughs> I had to babysit John and Bill, and uh, that was uh, really a mess of, of screams and tattletailing and accusations. And I got to tell you, John is a whole lot like our mother, Velda. He loves to throw parties. The bigger, the more grandiose, the better. She was that way. Right? You know, it actually illustrates, I think, rather well one of uh, his character traits. Uh, some uh, call it uh, one thing that uh, I'm not supposed to mention here because it's a family gathering. But, uh, well, let, let's say uh, I would liken it to uh, Monk. You, you know, the super detective on rerun TV. Uh, what is it that uh, Monk has? Uh, do you watch, anybody watch Monk? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Yeah. OCD. Yeah. OCD, that's what he has. Uh, that's his weakness. Uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. And you ever notice how Monk has to have everything just all lined up, just so, all just perfectly spaced, all taken care of, organized, just, just right. John. <laughs> right? Just has to be just so. Well, uh, you know, the number of emails we got on this, uh, Justin had pretty close. We got just about that many, you know? It was uh, what time, where, when to arrive, how to act, what to say, where to say it what not to say, what to say at the very last. That was all in there, honest to God. All perfectly organized. Uh, the time schedule, intimately organized to the minute. Email timeline agenda for John's party, it was titled. <laughs> it came three days ago at 11.38 a.m. Here it is, right here. <laughs> My, Michael appreciates it. <laughs> Good job, John. Began with 8.30 a.m. John, Jason, Justin helped to set up the party for two hours, seven minutes, 53 seconds. <laughs> 4 p.m. finished set up, island music playing, napkins, you know, oh, the silverware uh, are to be a certain grade of plastic. <laughs> very, very well planned. 6 p.m. served dinner as the guests arrived. 7.10, Dave and Robbie MC with each speaker. 
allowed three minutes, 47 seconds to be cut off at three minutes, 58 seconds. Yeah. So they won't exceed four minutes. Yeah. OCD, right? Well, I missed the party 20 years ago. I was back in Missouri, but my daughter Tabitha was here, and she told me about it. It was OCD then, too. <laughs> now, with all my memories of John and diapers, uh, threatening and tormenting Bill, a pain to Rich, and, and then to the teenage years, you might think that John is in for a really rough time of, of remembrances here. Uh, but there is hope. <laughs> because uh, does this one work better? No, oh, so. so. oh, he can turn it off. <laughs> okay. Good one, John. Uh, there is hope for him because with my uh, thinning hair and my expanding waist and my dimming eyes and ears, there's also fading memory. So. In the future, it looks much better for John, uh, at least until he begins to reach this age. Uh, he's probably safer from Rich and me in the future than he has been in the past. It's said that we never really grow up. We can only learn how to act in public. <laughs> and I must admit that John has learned well how to act with his marriage, his family, his God and church, his community and business. And we thank God that he has survived 60 years in spite of ATVs flipping over and <laughs> older brothers pestering him. And some people, no matter how old they get, never lose their beauty. They just move it from their faces to their hearts and that's so true of John and his soulmate Kelly. Yeah. I'm proud and I'm thankful for all of my brothers, but today's John's special day, and we thank God for him and for that special character he has. Happy birthday, John. That's beautiful, Gene. Thank you. So Gene and Sonny flew all the way across country from New Hampshire to be a part of this tonight. So thanks very much, Gene. I think we're going to pick it up just a little bit now. Steve Johnson, where are you, buddy? So uh, I really appreciate Steve Johnson because he's the only other man in John's life that's actually shorter than I am. Love the guy. And he's got something special for to sh share right now. Thank you, Dave. God bless him. Hold on. Now that's better. <coughs> my eyes are still good, but that might hurt. I might have hurt my neck. So, John, um, how many years? Let's see. Our son. That's my lovely wife, Joanne, down there at that table over there. Oh no, she's over there. Um, she told me she was going to move if I read everything I read to her this morning. But, you know, if you see a woman running around with her hands up, you know, please, just, you know, way better. Our son, our second son, Nicholas, was born while we attended South Hills Community Church in San Jose. And that's when John and I met. That happened to be 1970... Um, sorry, 1977. So... We go back a long, long ways. I didn't have enough paper, nor enough time, to do justice to what he asked me to do today, but we'll take a crack at it. However, you guys get your chance first. So, remember that little piece of paper? Okay, here's a few of them right here. Let's, let's, and these are all anonymous. There's no names, Mindy. Oh, no, sorry. Who's Mindy? Oh. Um, poor John. No friends to throw a party for him. So he had to do it for himself again. After this party, he will be poor John. 
John's old roommates say he had his own room and they had to share. What's up with that? I uh, wonder who that would be. How you doing, Meryl? Meryl. Oh, sorry. <laughs> John's hair is not really curly. Little known fact. Okay. Not true. John is a secret speed boat racer. He took us on a wild ride around the lake. We love John. Happy 60th. That was way too nice. Jesus. I want to keep that John was playing tag with kids. Oh, this is good. John was playing tag with kids on Puerto Vallarta. That's where John lived in San Jose with Kelly. And where the kids grew up. They were playing tag on Puerto Vallarta at night. John and the kids were loud. Mr. Lane, one of the neighbors, opened the front door and yelled out, I'm calling the cops on you kids only to see John running down the street naked. <laughs> oh, it said, just kidding. Oh. <laughs> only dad, and you can figure out which one of your kids said this. You have four. No, three, that's right. That's, oh, it's your son that's got five. Oh, jeez. <laughs> only dad makes all of us put name tags on at our own family events. <laughs> Now, I don't know what this one means. I'm going to read it. I, I don't, this is, you're just all going to have to, I'll just read it. I had a dream, and it's a secret. I don't want to go any further than that. John loves frozen grapes, bike rides with his gorgeous wife, and loves the muzies, mu muzies, muzies, M-U-Z-Z-I-S? -M yeah. Muzies. Yes. Music. Okay. I love Dina. Okay. John plays tennis like 3.5, but he thinks he's a 5.0. <laughs> I shall rename anonymous. I will keep that secret to my death. Hold on. Yeah. These are too good to let them get away. Oh, okay. <laughs> John went fly fishing on a houseboat and was so excited because he thought he caught a fish but instead it was a bat. He was so afraid of that bat, he couldn't get it off the hook, and he danced around for 30 minutes trying to get the bat off the hook. We just sat around and laughed. Didn't know about this on floor show, did you? Yeah, but I don't know, John. See, see. Oh. After that, I told my wife to call me Batman. <laughs> if you say she's Robin, I'm... Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know, John. Just heard there was free food and drink, so here I am. I don't know who you are, but good job. I don't know you. Good job. I don't know you. And, and, and if I had not just heard the story, and I've heard it before, but John told it to Joanne and I, just as we were arriving here, I thought John's last name was Butler. We moved into Woodland here, and we were having a party. Kelly and John showed up, unknown. Now, you'd have to know the backstory of this. John and Kelly had just moved into their house. So they didn't know these people. From Adam, John and Kelly showed up, unknown, uninvited, but in butler's outfits. <laughs> and spent the whole party serving people <laughs> like butlers. But... After it was done, every time we saw them at another party, we always introduced them as the butlers. We had no idea their last name was Maccabee. Now, this last one here is a little bit X-rated, but I did say obscure, so uh, here we go. The last time John was at my house, he borrowed my wife's lingerie. We have not asked him back. He doesn't know we know about this fact, but we have video proof. <laughs> Uh-oh, here comes, here comes YouTube. YouTube, it'll be on YouTube in a week, guys. Now, here's another one that just didn't have enough room. They just kept writing, so. The parrot that was on John's shoulder at the 2008 Leadership Morgan Hill fundraiser was actually John's pet bird from his childhood. John showed up an hour late for the first Leadership Morgan Hill class. He said, John's never late for an appointment. You know all that now, right? Yeah. He's always on time. Yes, he is. Yeah, you're right. He's been late before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's his middle name. Oh, John showed up an hour late for the first Leadership Morgan Hill class. He said he lived in Woodland 
and I thought he meant the senior mobile home park. <laughs> and since he looked too young to live there, I assumed he lived with his mother. Hey, where's Cherie? John, <laughs> John's theory is once you pass the age of 50, you are not allowed to go boating without a shirt on. <laughs> okay, now it's my turn. <laughs> It's only been over three minutes. Isn't there a time limit? <laughs> this was them, uh, not my three minutes. Oh no, I didn't do that. That's them. Hey, picky. I got the email. See what I did with it? Okay. How many of you know that on John and Kelly's wedding day, John was heard talking to his best man, Merrill? Now, understand this now. They're standing up in front of the church. Hey, where's Merrill? Stand up. He's there standing he up again. This is all true. That's my high school best friend. <laughs> they stopped being best friends in high school. So that's, that's... <laughs> Still came to the party anyway. Free food. Did you... Merrill's not dumb. Didn't have any dumb friends, did you, John? Okay. Okay. So it, it, the, the conversation kind of went like this. Now, remember, they're in front of the church. And, you know, Kelly's going to be coming down the aisle in a few minutes, and the minister's up there, and, you know, he's doing this religious thing, and John and Meryl over there, and, you know, he's kind of shaking knees, and so it kind of went like this. Psst. You know, John's trying to get Meryl's attention. I mean, he's standing right next to him, but, psst. you know how John likes to get your attention, make sure you're, psst. So Meryl's looking at him like, oh, you know, hey, man, we're John, you know, he goes, what? Who's that old guy over there? He's glaring at me. And Merle goes, which one? The one over there. Where? The one in the totally weird, gross, blue, bright blue polyester tux with a frilly collar. Oh, that guy. Yeah, how weird is that? Who would ever wear something like that gross to a wedding? Then Merle looks at John. Did you look in the mirror this morning before we came out here? <laughs> yeah, so what? It looked good on John Travolta. Still insisting, who is that guy? And then, you know, faking a cough, because Merrill at this point is, I mean, he's just embarrassed. I mean, can't get this guy to be quiet. You know, so he, he fakes a cough. You know, it's, if you want to kill me, you want to And John goes, what? So then he goes, well, cough didn't work. I'll try to sneeze. Kelly's dead. And so he goes, what? Kelly's dead? She's not dead. She's, and that exact moment, the minister says, who gives Kelly to be joined in holy matrimony with this man? And Merrill could no longer keep it in. He goes, Kelly's not dead. It's his dad, you idiot. Okay, so thus began a wonderful relationship. Uh, now, I, I need to get this right now. Hold on. Steve, read this. Oh, no, not the part. A wonderful... Now, this is in cursive, so it's a little hard for me. A wonderful... What is that word? Oh, relationship. Oh, I, I'm going to have to read this again. A wonderful relationship between Frank and John with a mutual respect and joint admiration between equals. P.S. Make sure you sound sincere and... Oh, I shredded the bottom. Damn. And memorize this so it doesn't sound like you're reading it, you moron. Oh, I'm sorry, John. I, I missed that part of the email, man. I, we all know that John is generous to a fault. But sometimes he's been known to be somewhat less than totally wise with his money when it comes to business deals. Remember the hydroponics? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> you had to be there. It was a wet experience. He has driven... On the smarter side, though, he has driven luxury cars, used cars, for years. He'd get great deals on really good-looking wheels. Do you all remember the Mercedes with the wire wheels? That was a gorgeous car. Well, back in late 1992, I was working on commission as the design-build consultant selling and managing the installation of landscaping for Croft Landscape Construction. John came to me and he said he felt I needed to reflect the proper image when I called on these expensive homes. He felt that I needed a car that better represented his company instead of the pickup truck that I was driving. 
at the time, he was driving a very nice Lexus. So I just thought, maybe he's going to give me that and you'll go buy another one. Ooh, contraire. He had lined up a real steal. I mean, deal. He actually bought a stolen car. How'd that get in there? No, 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 no. He went out and traded with a guy that had just gotten out of prison and the guy needed some quick cash. So Don decided to drop the really big bucks. He spent $400 cash. Just picture, if you can, a newly painted 1983 four-door gunmetal gray stick shift Isuzu diesel. <laughs> now when I drive up to these expensive houses, I truly reflected the image of a successful landscaping company. It sounded like I was driving a tractor. <laughs> but don't get me wrong here, ladies and gentlemen, that little car went on to serve me many, 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 many weeks. <laughs> Seriously, ladies and gentlemen, John has always tried to reach out to his friends, and many times, total strangers for that matter, always helping them while incorporating his strong Christian beliefs and always showing love in everything that he did for others. For example, how many of you here have ever received a note from John? And I mean a note from John. If you ever received one, you know what kind of a note I'm referring to. You know... The one that lists in bullet points the multiple reasons that the wind just blew my taper off the... Thank God. You're done. No, no. Lists in bullet points the multiple reasons why you did something that he thinks you should have been done doing differently and then goes on to lovingly explain over the next five pages in cursive handwriting that would make most doctors jealous the exact approach that you should take the next time you're in this situation. And then closes by saying that if he really didn't love you, he wouldn't feel compelled to share these, thought with you, these thoughts with you to help you grow as a person. Guilty. Okay. Guilty. Okay. Just, 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 just a minute here. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, it's gone. Where'd my bet? Oh, there it is. Who knows my help better than Steve Johnson? My helper. I have a confession to make, John. I have kept every one of your notes <laughs> that you wrote me all over the years, but I guess I should have read them first before I shredded them. After all, how else do you explain that after knowing you all these years, I'm still 5'4". <laughs> and your friend. Is that because I'm done or was it funny? Hold on. Thank you, Steve Johnson. Wow. He really knows John. So, um, Tim Dinner. Is Tim Dinner in the house? Where are you, Tim Dinner? Come on now, Tim. Come on, Johnny. I know you got something to say, buddy. Oh, a little bit. A little bit, okay. This is John's good friend from high school. Goes back a few years. Here's the mic, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey. Come on. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to go a little off topic here real quick because... I, like everybody else, got a ton of um, emails, <coughs> excuse me, post-it notes, one skywriting over my house. Um, we just did a high school reunion not too long ago, and I wasn't going to participate, basically. John talked me into emceeing it, which I really didn't want to do, and he kept persistent, as you know John is. So I ended up emceeing it. Two weeks before a reunion, John calls me, or excuse me, sends me an email, Timmy, give me your itinerary. In case something happens to you, we'll know what to do. So I, I sent him back to go, why don't you just buy a damn voodoo dog? <laughs> so we made it a weekend. Friday night, we're having a cocktail party. I'm on my Harley. I'm pulling into the hotel. Somebody opens the door of their car. My bike hits it, and I go flying into a oh. column. Didn't get hurt. So I walk in. I looked at John. I go, you know what? Your curse came true. <laughs> so anyway, yes, I did meet John in high school. <clears throat> 
You know, it's really funny. I didn't really know him very well. You know, it's true. I don't. I barely remember him. <laughs> John and I weren't even friends. <laughs> um, excuse me. You had a lot more hair. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Believe it or not, my hair used to be down to my shoulders. Um, oh yeah, before I forget, when I got here tonight, I told Kelly about the fifty dollars you promised me for doing this. She didn't know anything about it. You know, John you and I have. 50? Uh, Jeez. <laughs> it's funny though. I heard somebody was getting 75. <laughs> you know, John and I, John and I stayed in touch in the years. You know, John and I do know a lot of the same people, amazingly enough. And believe it or not, they like me better. <laughs> I need a clip on this thing. Good luck. Kind of remind. This kind of remind me of the reunion. Um, you know, another thing too, I have to admit though, I've always been impressed with John's business with Kim. I mean, John has become a very successful businessman, as you all know. Who would have thought Mo and Launch could be make you that successful? <laughs> you know, John, it's hard to believe you're turning 60. True story, I remember when John turned 50. John calls me up, he's all bragging. People say I don't look 50. I go, really? And he's like, yeah. He goes, what, Timmy, what's 50 look like? I said, I don't know, go buy a book. 